T-Man 978 Chill Review. Hello everyone, T-Man 978. Right now we're going to be looking at Bingo Toys BTO2 Wind Girl. Thank you Matt McArdle for allowing me to review this and thank you TM Reviews for shipping it to me after you reviewed it. But anyway, your eyes aren't playing tricks on you. They did this to skirt around copyright issues, I'm guessing. So, yeah, look at that pixelated Atari mess right there. As you may or may not have seen on TM Reviews channel, he was nice enough to break the stand inside of there. And <laughs> so, yeah. Um, this is meant to hold her up in jet mode and in robot mode, I'm guessing. They give you two of these that are kind of identical. I took the piece off of this broken one and plugged it to this piece down here that was already sticking in it. But I'm probably not going to mess with it. It's made out of transparent plastic. And these, this right here doesn't have any real friction anyway. So I don't see it holding up her body anyway. So basically useless. All right, here she is out of the packaging. For the three people that don't know, Wind Girl is supposed to be Transformers Windblade, a character introduced around 2013, 2014. We did a fan vote. They were like, what type of character do we want? And everybody voted on like a female and this and that. And boom, Windblade was born. They threw Windblade into the to the comic books. They made an action figure for her really quickly. And boom. Now she's super popular. And now a third party company has made a stylized version of her. That looks way more feminine and sexy, I guess. Here you go. I mean, now she was already designed after a geisha. Like the first robot they gave us was Drift, where they did like a fan vote. He was Japanese, so then boom, they went the, went with a female Japanese. I don't know if these are right, so I'm wondering how much did we actually influence that? Cause that's too coincidental. But anyway, I'm gonna let y'all see some of these details. It's mostly black and red plastic with the translucent in her weapons that attach to her wings or turbines I should say and there are other little details when you like really zoom in that's what her butt is looking like and mostly as far as die cast or anything the die cast is in the joints and honestly I don't know if I like that when die cast is in joints that those are the main things that give up or get loose over time and whatnot. But you see her face right here. She has the shiny green eyes. She has this ribbon on the back of the head. And yeah, there's little technical details in writing all over her body. If you really like to look at it. These right here are adjustable and variable. Um, you can move these around, move that back. This one is like really, really loose. I don't know what's up with that. This can go up and down to get out the way and whatnot. Cause she does have a stand port in her backside right there. Like right above our butt cheeks. But let's get into the other, let's just go straight into the articulation. The head is on a ball joint, so she can tilt, go up a bit, go down, of course, rotate, side tilts, and all that. Design-wise, it looks like she would have a butterfly joint, and you would think she would, but she doesn't. The shoulder pad stays out when you move the arm out and covers most of her bicep. But she can go forward and out. She has the bicep swivel, double jointed elbows. The wrists are on a ball joint, but you get a lot of range on that. 
and it bends in right here. The waist is all on this diaphragm ball joint. So she can do a lot back like they like to do and just some forward. I don't know what's the deal with that when it comes to female figures, especially. There's no ball right here, which disappoints me because this thing barely does anything to transform. I figured she'd be a super over exaggerated action figure with just some jet kibble on there. Like literally the only thing on this thing that looks like a jet is the cockpit and maybe these intakes. Like these don't even really look like wings even when you transform her. But um, yeah, you've seen all this. These side panels get out the way so that she can kick out to the side all the way. There is no drop down hips, but she does bend right here. And it is annoying trying to get that to snap back, which I can barely do. The leg can not really go back because of the butt sculpting, but she can kick forward 90 degrees. You get swivel in the thigh right here, which is scary tight. You get double jointed knees that bend up here. I think this one's mostly due to transformation and this is where the knee would really be. But if you want to bend all the way back, there you go. And this calf actually compresses. She has a bend here and technically a rotation, but that looks ugly. You can't really use that. The foot, the heel actually pinches and go flares out that much, but the foot can go back, forward, and it's basically a universal joint. So you can rotate it to get her like infinite articulation right there on the ankle. And I wanted to show her with both feet flat with the ankle pivot fully engaged. The swords mostly just peg in like these bottom ones. This actually grabs it right here between these two notches. But there's a little slot that this can fit in and another one deeper inside of there so that you can put that in there. With the swords, you see what they look like on the wings. I'm not gonna waste your time with that. They just plug right into her sword grabbing hands. So you can see she is capable of getting into a pose where she's holding the handle with both hands. The handle isn't that long at the bottom, but she is technically still holding it with both hands. The face pulls off at the bottom. You just pull it off. There's a little rectangular plug hole in the back that you can't see right now because it's super dark. Just basically put it over top of that and squish. And now she has her new face on. This one, let me turn the light on. This one is her more angry war face right there. So that's cool. Here she is holding two of the swords before I move to anything else. All right, several changes. Here she is holding the Korean love heart symbol thing where they put the fingers like that to represent a heart. She's using the open palm hand and she has on the joyful smile right there. And just in case, let me see if I can turn on the lights. Well, she has like a little gym in the center. Almost like that's the cockpit, but it's not. And she definitely has this defined boobs. If you couldn't see that when I was spinning her around before. Before I forget to mention it, I'm using a seeker, a masterpiece seeker stand. It was difficult getting her on here. It's almost like the hole in her back is not standard standport size. This is a different yelling face than I showed. Like the other one was more of like the fighting face right there. But this one is her yelling like, ah! Lastly, here she is with the heart 
hands right there. So, yay. Robot mode is mostly good. She has the the standard articulation you would you would want in an action figure. My issues are the wings are a bit flimsy. Now, I'm getting this second hand because someone else already played with it, but it shouldn't. They shouldn't be as loose as as they are. I don't think. Like only thing keeping these pieces right here in place is the fact that the swords are in there. If the swords weren't attached, these things right here will be flopping all over the place. Um, like I said, this is a bit flimsy right here. It's not like it locks and stays in the place where you would want. It's like I'm constantly finding myself fine-tuned adjusting that over and over and over again. I already mentioned that I would have liked more articulation definitely in the ab section and whatnot. It is a bit hard getting her to stand up, but so far the ankles seem to be tight. They're better than Nicey, definitely. Nicey got really loose on me on the hips, the knee, and the ankles like almost right away. In fact, she feels better than her, but the articulation is very, very similar. So if you got Nicey, you know what to expect there. But for the most part, besides mainly the wings she does not she feels sturdy she feels good and it doesn't feel like i'm gonna break it the only thing makes me feel like i might break it is when i rotate these thighs right here so that might need some shock oil or something i'll leave that to matt when i re return it to him the accessories are cool the faces are cool i Kinda wish she came with a gun, even though she's not norm known to have a gun. She uses the sword and wind pressure from her her wings, mostly. But she's painted nice. Looks great. Can't complain about her too much, other than the things I just nitpicked about. Tall female Marvel Legends. I guess typical female Marvel Legends, or maybe teenage. MP44 Optimus, what they like to call 2.0 Starscream Masterpiece. I kind I want to see a real full-on G1 style Masterpiece one blade. That would be awesome. Make Toys Galaxy Meteor. Starscream switched bodies in the comics so much. You probably had something like this. I, I don't have a problem with both of these standing on the same shelf. My crazy posable flames toys model kit wind blade right there. I got I have a chill review on that. So T Man 978 Flames Toys model kit wind blade if you need to see that. Here she is next to Nice a figure that I desperately wanted at the time. But now this thing is a loosey goosey mess. And finally, here's official masterpiece RC. That's my final comparison. Let's get to this transformation. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is loosen this so I can pull this sword out. I'm gonna loosen this so I can pull this sword out. I'm going to uh, loosen this so I can pull that sword out. I'm gonna lift this up so I can pull that sword out. Now these swords are actually kind of tabbed in. So you've got to kind of like press up against it to unwedge it. And there you go with that. Same thing over here. la di do la di da Get that up out of there. And I'm going to kind of lift that up and move this out the way. Lift that up. Move that out the way. I'm, I'm going to be maneuvering these things all over the place. So probably don't pay attention to me moving the wings around but we're gonna move this past that we're gonna move this past that now we can grab on her boobs and pull them forward this thing right here needs to shift how does it need to shift inward right yes inward yay now we can lift this head up. It's on a whole 
bunch of accordions and whatnot. Back here is another hinge that we can lift up a bit. Once we lift that up, we can actually rotate this down into that orientation right there. Now we can go ahead and flip this around and you know what? Push this hinge back. Push the hinge. Which way did the hinge go? The hinge goes up. <laughs> you could move this into place, but it's probably going to move out of place. The boobs. The boobs can come up. And peg into there. All right. The arms. The arms need to. I'm trying to stay in the light. Let me turn this light on. They need to shove up. And then the hand, the wrist. Well, they need to rotate this way. And then this joint can bend this way. And the fist needs to be out with the fingers outward. So let's do that again on this side. Shove this up, rotate that out that way so that this hinge can come out, this come back, and this can go that way. And now, down here, I'm gonna open this hinge up and open that hinge up to get ready for the feet to go in. But I'm going to like squeeze that, but I'm going to leave these wings kind of, you know what, let's bring them down, but um, let's, let's get on these feet. Shut this. I hope you guys can't hear my little cousins in the background. They are randomly singing and sound loud and are annoying. The knee needs to bend right here and right here and then this needs to bend away from here and rotate this way and now we can bend the knee again on that secondary joint and force this foot up into this cavity and wrap like all the way in there I'm moving it past this opening right there so now that's in there we can shut that let's try that again over here we're gonna bend this rotate it that way and this shut now I'm bending Bending the knee and shoving the foot up into the cavity beyond this opening right there. So you can see my finger behind it. When it gets beyond that, we can actually shut this on it. Are you shut? Or you should. But now this should be in the place it needs to be and we should be able to squeeze that. Open this up and open this up. Now we need the big wing, I mean the big sword, sorry. And we're gonna have to remember how to do this. I believe it goes into this port up here. No, 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 sorry. It goes into this port right here fit it in there which will be grabbing be grabbed by that and then this grab the big sword put it into this port right here let's zoom in on that this opening right here shove that into there as far as you can get it have it grab this then have that grab that 
And now, oh wait, another step. These hands need to actually fit inside of there. I did not do that. So, that one hand always goes in easy for me, but this one wants to fight for whatever reason. Let me zoom back out. But you get the picture. It needs to go into that cavity we, we initially made a long ass time ago. But uh, the hand came off the peg. I'm gonna fix that off camera. Pro tip if that does happen, these panels on the back also open up so you can push it through so you can get it out of there. Also, another pro tip, <laughs> I was using the sword holding hands instead of her clenched tight fist, and the sword holding hands are slightly bigger, but I have everything mostly together. We just need to grab these two other swords that are left over. This one basically has a peg right here that needs to slot into here. And then we can take this sword, overlap it, and peg it in there just enough. Those pegs are scary tight, and I don't want to risk breaking it. So that's why I went ahead and did this first. Like normally you would put them on at the same time, but I'm going to put that one in first. And then put this on like very gingerly if I can sheesh but you get the picture I'm wasting so much time it's in there now we're straight we have that together and basically here she is she is a jet of some type, a flying vehicle. This is her alt mode, I should say. But yeah, it's reminiscent of the G1 Seekers where the parts forming is pretty much mandatory. You can transform the G1 Seekers without taking off their wings, but it's almost mandatory, but it turns into something that almost looks like a jet or maybe something that's actually alive. Now these wings back here kind of look silly, but they give off the silhouette of what it should look like. And I don't know, it just looks like something that will be on Galaga or something like that or some type of space shooter. Like she doesn't even become an earth vehicle anymore. Features this cockpit actually does open and it has these in there. I don't know if they actually look like seats and I don't know if you can actually see this. Let me brighten this up. There we go. I don't, I can't say that necessarily looks like seats. Then up here, we had the, have these skiffs. There's no wheels. And these were actually here the whole time on her knees. So she can just land like this. And then she takes off like this. There's no like needing to come into the runway like that. Cause they aren't wheels, but yeah. Fold that up, fold that up. Bring this back, bring this back. And yeah, I like that she mostly comes together to form something, but I do not like putting these wings on. Like this came off in my hand. This is not a really solid connection right here. And it's unfortunate they had to resort to parts forming because 
I dislike that. I dislike it a lot. And they don't even look like real wings. So if you can see it in between where it just used to be, there is a stand port hole right there. But a typical stand can't fit in there. Maybe the one she came with fits in there. I don't know. But here's this little thingamabob that she came with. I am capable of wedging that into that cavity. It's not a sturdy, sturdy connection, but it's working. So she's suspended. And I, boy, 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 boy. I don't remember the noise being able to be this loud when I'm doing reviews. I don't have anything masterpiece wise in alt mode that I can really compare her with per se. But here is a deluxe car. She does compact a lot. And yeah, yeah, that's that's all I'm gonna show. It looks nice and decent. I, like I said, I like the paint. Um, I don't like the parts forming. This seems crooked. There's just something about the wings and the way stuff comes together. It just seems like off a bit. Maybe I don't have the legs right, which could be true for me, but you've seen what I was working with during that transformation. Well, yeah. And I saw that in MGO's review, this can come off easily. This never came off of me until just now when I just tried. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, it's a decent action figure. I'm not sure how much this thing costs. But, sheesh, I wouldn't want to pay more than 100 bucks for this. If you see it for more than 100 bucks, I can't really recommend it. I'm pretty sure everybody getting it off of Show Z. Show Z has a bunch of good ass prices. So I don't blame anybody. But, um, yeah. If you like this, I can't say not get it because the robot mode isn't horrible. It just has the few things that I nitpicked about in this video. I hope y'all were paying attention to me because I don't feel like going back over it. <laughs> Anywho, thank you, Matt McCarl. Thank you all for watching this. Until next time, T-Man978, out of here. Figure action. That one's me. Join the Syndicate Toy Hunters Facebook group. Link in the description. Click, click the videos. Click the f***ing videos, baby. Click, click the videos. You should really click these videos. Click, click the videos. Click the f***ing videos, baby. Click, click the videos. You really should click those videos. Click the channel.